welcome everyone to cloud delight youtube channel this is the place where we learn technology so previously in our previous videos we have seen about aws config uh, theory section and we are into security services of aws series so here today we'll be walking you through on the aws config practical part of things in AWS console. Now we already know AWS config is one of the security services which will record and evaluate configurations of your AWS resources. So how does this actually work? So initially uh, to give you a few important points this AWS config you will be able to use it in an individual account or if you are managing a multi account strategy, if you have an organization structure and if you have any security services accounts specifically used to manage and configure all the security services, you will be able to turn on the config on that particular account and capture all the other account details and also the account details in which it is turned on. So all these things are possible with respect to config. It is single account uh, capability and multi account strategies also this can be implemented. So first we will see how do we enable the AWS config by default whenever you create a new AWS account that will not be turned on because it is not covered under a free tier or it does not come for free it has some costing which we will talk about it per resource uh, evaluation it will cost some dollars so it is not uh, turned on it is basically turned on based on the requirement from our end only aws console by default it will not be turned on so set up aws config this is i am in the config um, landing page of config so here if you see there is a get started button so we'll see what are the options which are available for us to turn on the config now say se general settings rec resource uh, types to record it will ask us whether you want a specific resource that needs to be evaluated or you want all the resources which comes up as part of console you want that to be evaluated console or it is created by cli or whatever is running on aws uh, uh, account that will be captured so you have an option now there is a scenario where you want to capture only on ec2 instances i don't want any other things to be cap monitored and evaluated for the compliance so i just can uh, go for a resource of specific type and then i give aws resources and then i choose the required ec2 instance alone Okay, here you can go for uh, CloudWatch alarm or any specific uh, uh, service of the AWS. So usually what is the best practice or what is recommended is to record all the current. Now if you see here all the current and future resources supported in this region. Now whatever at the time of enabling the config say for example your account has certain number of resources which are already running and there are forecasted resources that you will spin up later point in time both will be covered by config whenever you turn this on it will take few minutes to capture the existing resource configurations and the items it has to capture and whenever you are creating new resources in the future once you have turned on those things also will be captured so this is recommended so that you need not have manual intervention whenever you create a new resource so what we will do we'll, rec we'll record all current and future resources supported in this region usually what happens it is region specific if you see here it is region specific now this region specific will not include the global services like IAM, IAM resources, Route 53 related things, all these things will not be included. So you can include those to be captured and mark it as compliant or non-compliant under AWS config. Now config role, it will by default create a service linked role. If you have an existing role uh, that you have created for other purposes, you can still use that. But we will go with uh, create AWS config service link role now uh, delivery method where it has to capture the details which ha it has taken whatever the configurations uh, capture or uh, uh, whatever the uh, uh, related information it has captured how does it want to capture we will give it to 
deliver it to S3 bucket. If you see here, the bucket name it has taken is config hyphen bucket hyphen the account ID number. By default, it has taken. If you want any prefix that needs to be added, you can still add it. But the S3 bucket will follow this folder structure: AWS logs, account number, config, and the region. All these things will be available. Now, any changes? Say, for example, you have an EC2 instance where you have created a config rule telling that no, none of my EC2 instances are to be in stopped state if at all it goes to stopped state please notify there is a change in event for the resource the instance was running and it is changed to stop state so there is a configuration change that has happened or an ec2 instance is there now it is running with t2.micro now you you someone has changed for some requirement to t3.micro then there is a change in the configuration these kind of incidents or th this is not actually an incident but a configuration change so these kind of configuration changes if you want to be notified then you can go for sns topic it will create another topic where you can choose uh, the delivery method you can choose the topic from your own account which is already created or another account where uh, it will link with the role now what i'll do i'll uh, uh, give this as the default one i'll click on next now we have seen in the previous section of the theory where uh, aws uh, config has uh, managed rules and also the customizable rules also is possible custom rules is also possible but with aws managed rules i'll walk few of the rules uh, one or two uh, account part of organization if a particular account is part of organization i am considering it as a compliant uh, Thing. if not it is considered as non-compliant resource so that compliance check you can do it using this particular rules and if you go uh, ALB WAF enabled I want any ALB that is running on my account to be enabled by WAF that is the best practice and I call it a compliant and if it is not then it is a non-compliant so that if you choose this the config will check that ALBs for this particular rule like this we have n number of uh, managed rules which is already created by AWS we can pick and choose and there is an option where we will be able to customize based on our requirements also so say for example a custom rule law for example if I want to create any instance which is created in R4 or R5 uh, instance type mark it as non-compliant because I don't want to use those instance types I'm just giving you an a vague example so in those scenarios you can use custom config rules to mark it compliant and non-compliant I'm not choosing any rules for now I have not chosen any rules it is zero and I am confirming it so this is how we enable the config on a particular account once it is enabled it will take few minutes for it to record the current configurations and also it gives us the entire uh, things which is showing up as part of config so it would take some time uh, if you see here uh, link is created uh, sns uh, topic is created s3 bucket is created everything is done properly well now we will see the rules and compliant resources since i have very minimum uh, resources which are running in my account it would not uh, make sense a lot of sense here but if you see here on the console how you'll have to see the compliance checks is that compliance status the rules we don't have any rules created but uh, resources non if we have any rules created it will show the non-compliant resources and non non-compliant uh, services which are running in our account now if you go back to the rules i have not added any role so I, if you click on this you have all these three types of rules that you will be able to enable one is add aws manage rules create custom lambda rule that is the lambda function will be having uh, the checks that needs to be done or create custom rule using guard so anything you will be able to uh, use it now what i'll do i'll quickly check on instance any instance level uh, instance approve ami ids detective approved by uh, auto scaling capacity rebalancing auto scaling multiple instances alarm all these things are possible but we will not uh, take desired instance type i'll choose this okay next desired instance type this is the resource 
multiple resource identifier i will use my existing ec2 instance to come under the checks okay let's go here to the ec2 instances and i will pick the instance id i am creating a custom rule where i will choose the instance id and instance type here what is it it is t2.micro so whatever is compliant is t2.micro t3 if i give t3.micro the config will check for the ec2 instances which are there in the console which are there in the account for t3.micro if it is not t3.micro apart from t3.micro everything else will be marked as non compliant so we'll just see that next add rule now i have added a rule this is my custom rule uh, using the manage rule i have given my uh, desired instance uh, uh, requirement now what it will do it will take some time and then it will check every 5 minutes it will be checking uh the rules now how do we know whether we have turned on or not go to the settings here you will see the recording is on and the configurations and the delivery method whatever we chose everything will be available for some reason you want to change the configurations of this i want specific resources you can go edit here and then use that okay dashboard i'll go back to the dashboard and i'll wait for this non compliant resource to come and then let me give the resource identifier it is taking time for it to uh, get on to that so apart from this uh, until it comes up we have seen other things like uh, uh, the rules the conformance packs everything is available here now if you see here one non compliant resources because the config rule what we have set is we have set it as it has to be t2. t3.micro but this instance is running in t2.micro so it has marked it as non compliant if you see here non compliant not set desired instance type if you see the parameters is t3.micro but the instance is running with t2.micro and it is marked it as non compliant okay if you see here in the aggregators resources that is one part to check all your non um, compliant resources and then if you give here the resources okay rules this is the rules i am just uh, giving the brief idea on this now if you see in the, under the rules also you will get to see how many non compliant resources are there and then let's refresh the page now multi account multi region aggregators are also possible since we just have one region will not be able to give it advanced queries if you want to query on anything this is also possible under the settings this should be turned on so these are the things if you see here rules no one non compliant here one non compliant there are a lot of other things which you will be able to add it as and when it is required so this is just one of the examples on the hands on section for aws config so anything more you want to know please put it on the comment section um, on the use cases uh, which you are facing so that we can come up with more videos on this on the practical part otherwise this is one of the examples which we have uh, picked up to show you how to use enable config on an aws account so that's it for this lecture and uh, until we meet again thank you so much